Good morning. <laughs> I come to you this morning with a little bit of frustration, and you'll understand why in a minute. I'm calling today's uh, video Jesus' Radical Perspectives. And I wrote in my little blurb just a few minutes ago, Yesterday at the New Way, Sue talked to us about Jesus' third way in her message originally entitled, Ending Violence and Domination. When I can overcome the technical difficulties, I will post it for everyone. Anyway, what she presented is a radical understanding of the message of Jesus. <laughs> Let me just say that the technical difficulties have to do with the fact that it comes to me in an Apple format or QuickTime and it's not compatible with my Windows Live Movie Maker and things that I've tried to do in the, that, that have worked in the past on the previous video that I posted uh, importing it don't work it just doesn't read it and YouTube I can't I tried to upload it on YouTube even before this video I spent an hour and a half or more working on it here this morning unsuccessfully getting it I can watch it but I can't get it to go where I can upload it because I need to be able to edit it on on some device Windows Movie Maker or some program and get it up to YouTube and I just have I've been unable to cross that hurdle this morning but her message yesterday was powerful and it helped me with a lot of understanding because as I've stood up against injustice, sometimes I'm challenged by the words of Jesus, turn the other cheek. If someone sue you at the law to take your coat, give them your cloak also. If a man can, someone compel you to go a mile, go with them two miles. I always thought that meant submission to injustice. Sue, what Sue presented yesterday totally cleared up for me that whole matter. That's not what Jesus was teaching us at all. Jesus' perspectives were radical perspectives and they were not about laying down and being a victim and doing it without protest <laughs> or without without integrity just laying down and submitting to authority blindly and I'm not going to steal her thunder because it's going to get posted at some point hopefully quickly I don't know the date because I can't do it and I don't have time I have a lot of things to work on today and tomorrow I was told that I received a notice on Saturday and I have five days, it was mailed on Thursday, five days to respond to the uh, Court of Appeal with this document filled out and returned to them. And I was told don't trust the U.S. mail because they will disqualify the appeal if they don't get it in a timely way so I was told I, I need to actually drive and hand deliver it to Daytona Beach which is a, at least a three and a half hour drive round trip uh, which is not something I look forward to doing but it's something I need to do and I need to do it quickly and that cuts into the other things that I have planned um, but there is tremendous injustice in our world and in the in the system even in the appeals process I can see and looking at the Florida rules of of court I mean they make you jump through all sorts of hoops and make it almost impossible for anybody to fulfill and to dot their I's and cross their T's exactly as they require and Jesus's radical perspectives, as, to, as Sue taught us yesterday, is, is to come up with creative methods of nonviolent resistance and standing up for truth in a nonviolent manner, which is what I see happening around the world. The violence is not caused by the people that are protesting. 
99% of the time. It's caused by infiltrators who are paid to infiltrate by the establishment itself. That is my perspective of reality, and, and, and when the truth is known, I will lay you any amount of odds that that's what's going to be revealed, and it will be revealed, I believe, this year in the ninth wave. The radical perspectives that Jesus taught are being put into practice by people like Gandhi in the past, where they, he liberated a whole nation, Martin Luther King, produced civil rights for blacks in, in, a, in the United States that had been long denied and changed the world with the, their ideas of radical nonviolence. These are things that they learned from Jesus. These are things that need to be implemented in our day. It's not about taking up arms and, and fighting with violence against violence because violence will only ever beget, beget more violence. It will beget more violence. It, that's what it creates. <sighs> Forgive me for getting tongue-tied a little bit there because I don't usually work, use the word begat or any form of it, but I, I just did. Anyway, what is happening in our world is nothing short of an evolution of consciousness that is producing a revolution unlike the world has ever seen. As people are awakened to the vast injustices in our monetary system, in our legal system, in our political system, in our corporations, in our medical system. I mean, I watched a, a video that someone sent me last night about a doctor in Texas who had a cure for cancer and it was effective most of the time, and how the establishment fought him and fought him and fought him for years taking him into, into court. I mean, absolute insanity when you watch these things, folks. When you understand that the power structure in our world is totally unjust, totally unlawful under, under God's law, under natural law. Totally unlawful, lacking common sense, doesn't make any sense at all because the greed of the system blinds the eyes of the people. I have to, when I look at such things as that, I wonder... Where is the heart of these people? Do, are they totally devoid of natural compassion? Is there no divine flame that burns within them? Or at least that they can draw from? Is there none of that natural, God-given, innate ability to see and understand what they're doing? I, I don't get it sometimes. I don't understand where these people come from. It was interesting um, in regard to the lawyer that's been fighting against me, uh, representing the bank and the one that's been trying to uh, take, my, take my home away from me, even though from my perspective there's no lawful right to do that. There's all sorts of laws being broken. But one of my friends yesterday said he Googled her name. And on the same page, and I didn't look it up, so I did not confirm it, but on the same page that comes up, I come up with her. I'm, I'm in the same uh, search when he clicks that on that somehow I'm linked to her, <laughs> which uh, I found rather fascinating because he did. And again, I did not go and, and, and check it out for myself. And I'm not going to ask anybody else to either. It doesn't matter, but we, we are linked. We are all linked. This is the radical perspective. And this is the thing that I think is, is needed in human consciousness to shift the entire world. We need to see that even when we appear to be playing roles of enemies in this lifetime, although I don't consider her an enemy, I consider her someone that's challenging me to develop more... Uh, more of my skills to learn more about the system that I live in and to empower me to stand up so that I can help change that system. She's actually pro propelling me on. I get frustrated. I get frustrated, but she's propelling me forward with her actions and living in the world that I'm living in. It's all working together. And it, it's... As I said, it's frustrating for me sometimes, just like the, the technical challenges that I was facing this morning. I mean, I would like everything to flow easily. It doesn't happen that way. And 
And Jesus didn't promise that in this world we were going to have an easy road. He says, in the world where you're going to have tribulation, people are going to accuse you falsely. Uh, people are going to, to mistreat you. There's injustices in this world. This is the world that we've come into. And in this ninth wave, we get the opportunity to address them. And the more of us that are willing to take a stand, not violently against the system, not seeking retribution against any individual, but the things that are unjust, we need to say, stop this. Stop this perception that, think, that makes you think or makes anyone think that they have the right to take rights from other people. We are equal under God. Each one of us are given rights naturally so to be the unique people that we are. The problem is we, be, we are very ignorant. And, and one of the things that I'm learning in this lawsuit is I keep uncovering deeper and deeper layers of my own ignorance. And we are needing to go a new way, to find a new way and to cr creative ways to s take a stand and say, stop the injustice, stop the insanity, stop the greed, stop the, uh, the unjust distribution of wealth where a few people keep getting richer and richer and richer at the expense of almost the entire world. These things need to stop. They need to come to an end. We need to address them this year by whatever creative means we can without violence. That was Jesus' radical perspective. It was without violence. And understanding those things that made me think that I needed to submit to authority, understanding the context in which they were given, which I never knew all of my life, I never knew what Sue presented yesterday. It was so amazing. And I, I said to her, I said to her, you're right, Sue. This was a perfect introduction for the uh, class that I presented yesterday on understanding. And domination caused in the monetary system by our courts, by our banks, by our entire political structure. It's all a domination thing, and Jesus gave us the way out. Peaceful non-compliance, if you will. And I applaud those that have the courage to do this, and, and I know I'm going to have to be doing it at some point myself. I don't know how everything is going to turn out. As I said, the, with the appeal, there's so many... I, I feel so overwhelmed as I, as I read these rules and as I look at what they sent me, and, and they give me such a short time to prepare it, and I, I have to give quick answers, and they give you a little bit of space, and it has to be a form filled out. It's handwritten. It's not typed. My God, I'm just f absolutely flabbergasted by, by all the things that have to be done. But we shall prevail. Bottom line, we, shall, we the people shall prevail in this against those few that dominate us. Now what needs to be done is somehow, somehow the pe people that are just like us, that are playing this game, like the lawyers, like most of the bankers, like... Uh, even a lot of the politicians, they're playing this game, but somehow their heart has to be awakened. Somehow their natural compassion has to be reached. And I'm surrounding, I'm choosing to surround these people that people would like. They are not my enemies. The enemy is the ignorance that is required for the system to continue going on. That's why the ninth wave is about conscious co-creation. That which has been unconscious is being brought to the surface so that we can deal with it. I hope this hasn't seemed like rambling. It feels like rambling to me, but then again, I've been a little bit scattered and not as centered as I sometimes am when I start the video. But I'm going to leave this with you now, and hopefully within the next, at least next couple or three days, I hope to get Sue's video so that I can put that up. I mean, it's an amazing video, and then I've got a couple of others waiting in the wings that I want to put up also where she talks about Jesus' worldview. It's an amazing stuff, folks. Namaste. Have a great day.